So we have a look inside the inside pages. I rather yeah. like this um, story. This is about Elizabeth Cook, um, and she uh, is with her granddad and her father, James. And basically, um, she is not... She's only nine, but she's a champion pigeon racer. She's beaten her um, dad in the process. I love this, this little head headline. Now that's quite a coup. Um, she's got 76 pigeons, which she looks, for, looks after all of the time. Um, last season, she and her charges, two young birds called... Herbeck Dash and Triple B won four out of six races in Devon and Cornwall, beating several former title holders, including her dad, ouch, and uh, ruffling <laughs> lots of feathers, they put it, in her professional pigeon fencing circles. Her first victory is a 90-mile contest in which her dad's bird uh, was fourth. Um, it's, and that's lovely, and he'd worried that she might, be, might do so badly she'd be put off for life, but not at all. She's obviously very talented, spends hours... Um, looking after the birds and giving them breakfast and studying every single movement that they make, which is brilliant. Are you um, are you a watcher of The Last Dance? I can't remember whether you've watched it or not. The... No. OK, so if you don't know, this is the, the Netflix documentary which sort of centres on Michael Jordan and talks about the success at the Chicago Bulls in the, in the 1990s. And um, we're going to be speaking to BJ Armstrong. Sally's going to be talking to this fellow, who is um, one of those Chicago Bulls players who was in that dressing room uh, with Michael Jordan in the 1990s. Um, it's, it's got quite a bit... Quite a few people talking because um, Michael Jordan, obviously a serial winner, and Chicago Bulls were very successful. But um, did he cross the line on any occasion? His well, style, was his being... style, because he, he demanded the best not only of himself but of those around him as well. So uh, interesting to hear what B.J. Armstrong has to say uh, to Sally about that. Uh, we're talking about white storks last week as well. Remember the white stork? Was that last week? I can't really remember. Anyway, I don't remember the white storks. I thought we did a bit of white storks last week. The first white storks born in Britain oh, for yes, six hundred years. Uh, have delighted naturalists by peering out of their nest for the first time. And here they are. Uh, this is at um, Nepp Castle uh, near Horsham um, in West Sussex. Castle's very popular at the moment. Uh, the birds are born earlier this month as a result of the White Stork Project, which is attempting to bring the species back into Britain. So there you go, some white... After we covered it last week, more white stork news in the papers today. <laughs> um, and this is a rather... I mean, fire and rescue services do an amazing job in all sorts of different ways, don't they? Of course, fighting fires, but other things as well. And this is a three-year-old crossbreed ruby who'd been walking through woods near Shrewsbury. I mean, that is the dog. Um, and she apparently chased a squirrel and then got her head firmly wedged in a, in a little gap. Um, her owner couldn't free her from the wall, but Shropshire Fire and Rescue came to the rescue... Um, and used a cutting saw, apparently, to remove the mortar from the wall before gently lifting the stone away and freeing her. Good work.